Anticipation is still a really important uh, phenomenon in, in myotonic dystrophy. What we would hope that by understanding how the repeat is changing throughout the lifetime of the individual, there are three kind of main outcomes we would like to come from understanding that process. So the first of these is to be able to offer more accurate prognostic information for families. So that obviously applies to individuals who are currently asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms. It might be useful them, for them to know how quickly or how severe their, their symptoms are likely to become as they become older. But also for families thinking about their reproductive choices, trying to understand what the relative risk is to the next generation, how severe the symptoms are likely to be in the next generation. And at the moment, we're not really able to offer any accurate information, but the type of work that we're doing, we would hope to be able to, to provide more accurate information so families can make more informed choices about whether they want to, to have children go ahead with pregnancies, etc. So that's a really important uh, uh, outcome that we think will improve uh, patients' abilities and families to make informed choices. The second thing that we would like to come out of this is to better be able to understand that variation that we see within the patient population, to make clinical trials more informative. So one of the problems when you're try testing a new drug in a disease that's as variable as myotonic feet, the patients have such different symptoms and they're progressing at different rates, and clinical trials are expensive and you want to to do that with the minimum number of patients possible. Now, the more different the patients are, the more difficult it is to do a small trial because each patient is different. So if we can understand why different patients are um, having different symptoms and predict how they might respond differently to, to the drugs, then we can potentially get more accurate data from the, from the clinical trials. So by reducing that genetic variation, it should be easier to see whether the drug is really working or really not working and getting around some of the variation where you might just happen to have put the milder patients in one group and the more severely affected patients in the other group and you could either accidentally miss a therapeutic effect or accidentally exaggerate a potential therapeutic effect. So by understanding how the genetics relates to the variability, we should be able to reduce that effect. The final area in which we hope that the research that we're doing it will be important for families is thinking about more longer term development of therapies. So we know that the repeat is changing throughout the lifetime of the individuals and it's the root cause of the disease. Everything goes back to the DNA. 